Hi guys and welcome to Angling View and today you join me for another Lockdown 2 video and where am I? I'm on the deck. I'd love to be on the side of the bank but too cold, too icy and uh, yeah nobody's going to be fishing much uh, with the amount of ice that's around today. So I'm braving the cold in the garden and uh, we're going to talk today about the pros and cons of the luggage that I've owned. Now this is another one that's been uh, asked by subscribers uh, in the comments and I'm more than happy to talk about it. Uh, I actually thought I've not had that too much too much luggage but <laughs> when you do go back through it because I don't change it that much I've had to go a little bit further back I have had more than I thought uh, so we're gonna start hmm, before I started making videos I'm gonna go um, or maybe when actually when I just started the angling info very very early days um, and I'd got uh, the ethos now I've got myself a little reminder here because there is um, a few little bits and bobs so I started off with the matrix ethos now and that's not the pro it's uh, the standard ones uh, you'll have all seen them black white and blue the original matrix colors uh, and that's what I started off with um, after I'd had bits and bobs and mix and match before that the first all all luggage of one type uh, was my matrix um, and what did I have so I had the carry-all um, I'll, let, I'll list them off first and then we'll go into pros and cons. So I had the carry-all, I had the bait bag and I had the actual rod bag to stick uh, my poles and rods in. Um, the old school ones where you can fit everything in there before obviously the poles started to come with absolutely everything. So I, ha I, I started fishing a lot more and uh, I wanted something that was different to what I'd seen before uh, and Matrix was up and coming and I thought oh I'll, I'll, I'll try this out the look they look um, really good quality and uh, yeah I wasn't really disappointed so the the bag itself um, the carry-all that I had had a, a pouch on the front for for nets which I used to just put my landing net heads in I didn't fish really a lot of matches back then um, and uh, yeah I, I, I used to put my, my net handles in there and there was a nice uh, fold over flap and a nice clip um, to make sure that your nets didn't go anywhere and it also I, I believe it had a, two little um, eyelet holes in the bottom in case there was any uh, water to, to drain out then the main compartment I think it was about 45 litres and it was a really decent size um, a lot of uh, strong gr uh, zips as you'd imagine from Matrix um, a double uh, folding handle which had uh, a velcro strap and then a big over strap to go over your shoulder so I mean the, pr the pros itself um, in regards to quality were very good and um, the the quality was very good the space was good and um, the, all the grips the velcro the straps were really good um, and they still sell them now and you still see them knocking them out second hand so anything that knocks around second hand that still looks good means it's been built well and really the with the carry all the only the only con uh, I had uh, potentially was that um, it wasn't waterproof but then again lots of things nowadays aren't that waterproof and it was obviously a fabric and you had to sort of not lined or anything like that and you'd have to get it out and hang it on washing line or uh, you know have it out in dining room or, or whatever um, to, to dry it out if you had a session where it rained so much but you know that, that's a lot of luggage that's um, still today. Now moving on to the bait bag, the bait bag uh, was really good, it had a, a big main compartment um, which f fit everything that I needed in realistically, um, unless you went completely over the top. This is the days before the EVA tubs were out or anything like that um, and I used to keep all my bait tubs in my carry-all um, along with uh, any of my, back then I only had small pole rollers um, which fit into that same bag um, into the, into the carry-all really realistically the bait bag was just that ground bait and pellets um the odd um lava mix or or whatever to to, to put a little bit of flavor in um but it was really before the days of wafters and things like that so mainly just pellets and ground baits uh, to be honest but a really really strong bag um you know the zips again were good the handle had a nice handle on the top uh, and, and a big one to go over your shoulder and also it had the um, the, the zip pocket at the front as well so if you wanted to put um, any 
your rig boxes or any sort of extra scissors or anything like that or f feeder tubs you know within within limits and um, you could fit those in the front so uh, you know that that was a real big positive and obviously the design of them uh, with a black white and blue looked really really good and um, really bold uh, and stood out nicely um, me being a tart of course um, but uh, at the time I had the matrix um, super uh, the matrix super box I want to say S25 I think it was or it might be an S30 but it, it was a long time ago it was the original ones with the black and the blue I didn't actually put that in my um, pros and cons of seat boxes actually uh, but if you do want to know about that one I could I can do a pro I tell you what we could do we could go from uh, we could do one that's from the start where it talks about the equipment and the experiences I went through as younger maybe that's for another video but yeah all in all really good and again the the exactly the same material um, a really strong <clears throat> durable material but so got soaked really quickly and easy <laughs> you know it's one of those isn't it um if it chucks it down you stick it in car and umbrella realistically speaking uh, but we've all been caught short there um and moving on to the rod bag um i believe that mine was a six tube rod bag is what i'm gonna th i'm gonna say um and i had uh, a couple of tubes the old school black tubes with um, my uh, a feeder rod and a waggler rod in there <clears throat> and I had um, a pole um, I think at that time I had um, the SR1 or might have been, it might have been a little bit further on from that certainly when I originally got it so I took it out of the Daiwa case and I actually put it into there um, along with a brolly and a, uh, a landing net handle so it, it, the main part fit quite a lot and then obviously it got the front pockets which you put your brolly in and your, your landing that handle and anybody that knows me I don't really carry brollies that at all really anymore um, it's just one of those things I, I still like fishing with them but um, it certainly got a lot of space and again made it that, that durable material uh, lovely graphics on there um, lot of, a big adjustable strap and a little handle so you could lift it and carry it um, if you just lift loading it in and out of the car and at the bottom it got a nice um, sort of really reinforced pad so when it were getting dragged if it were dragged on the bottom which I'm small so and even when I have it tight it sometimes drags up floor um, so you know that that little bit of reinforcement so the pros are really strong for, for that, that set of luggage really and that's probably why you still see them knocking about today um, and again the negative is exactly the same um, it, it, it wasn't waterproof in any fashion but um, you know a really good set of luggage and I did enjoy having those that, that luggage obviously when I, I changed about sorry for the wind it is a bit windier than I thought out here to be honest um, so moving on from there that's when I got into my Daiwa tournament phase like I said I had the box and the, the pole the whisker and and the, the the tournament handle and all that kind of stuff along came the Daiwa air luggage um, I'm just gonna have a little read through what I had actually because I did have a few bits so I, I did have the bait bag um it was a small bait bag i also had the the net bag to put your keep nets in i also had the carry-all and i also had the rod bag itself now i'll start with the rod bag now i the whisker obviously came with its own um case itself i took all of those out and put them into um a daiwa air um hold all it was the biggest one that they did i think it was an eight or a ten tuber um and i did that just because it looked nice <laughs> that's about as simple as it was um the the yankin banks and the ninjas at the tech so the yankin banks that i had at the time they had their own ready-made rod sleeves that came with it so i didn't actually need a hard case or anything like that i just had uh, three rods which were all had their own cases um w with the reels attached so i didn't need to put anything in there apart from the landing net handle um, and i did have a daiwa air umbrella at that time um with the flap that opens at the back um, so I did fit that in there as well as long as uh, my whisker um, and I did have, still have the SR1 uh, which I, I had in there as well and that would just effectively from a bit of margin work if I needed it so quite a, a, a substantial sized um, bag and it had plenty of space for all the rod tubes on either side had additional pockets like for your, your landing net handle and uh, your umbrella a good big padded strap and a good handle and zip um the the negative the pros obviously it's still that was all the pros and obviously the design looked awesome with that red with that air uh, it looked because uh, you could get the red or the blue and i went for the red um because that matched my box because i'm you know i'm a tart you know that so 
there's a, there's a, a positive and negative. So it came with a really bizarre feeling material on it, a little bit like what's on the Superior, um, which gave it a semi-waterproof or showerproof um, kind of finish. But that is a positive, but the, the negative and the con from that was the fact that if you brushed up against any abrasive surface, it just put a streak of mark down. It marked really, really easy. So although hard wearing, it didn't rip, but the, just the material um, marked super easy. Just getting it in and out of the car, it'd scuff. Um, and if you were fine with that, then, then no problem. Um, but it did, it did scuff quite easily. So moving on from that, the carry-all, again, that was, um, I'm going to say a 45 to 55 litre. I think it might have even been, no, it was definitely the 45 litre. Um, and again, it had um, the the clip for the front, uh, which for the nets. Now I used, um, I used to put my nets in there and then I only used to put my keep nets in the in the net bag, but we'll go on to that. So yeah, I had my, my, my landing net heads in the front a big massive the straps were great massive padded shoulder strap they were really good um, and again the, the double together holded one just if you want to pick it up and lift it um it got the reinforced bottom like a neoprene uh start rubberized bottom not not a hard shell um but you know it it, it, it was reinforced inside a plenty of space for all your bait tubs and, and all the bits and bobs and still I'd not invested in any decent rollers. This is one thing you'll find about me. And people look at all my gear and say, you know, oh, you know, you've got this and you've got that. There's some things that I, I've just never really invested in and a lot of money in. And that one of them is rollers and which sounds silly. I mean, I've had good rollers. I've had okay ones like um, for the Preston V rollers. I've had the Preston uh, flat rollers, but not the the top of the range. You know, I've had a Census one, which were about 50, sorry, um, a Mayhew one, which were about fifty quid. Um, but nothing what you'd say is a premium roller until now. Obviously, having the Matrix, so they've always been around that size. So they've always fit into a carry all or something. So I've not always needed the the roller bags. So a lot. That's why the first few things I've said to you, I've not mentioned about having a roller bag because I didn't actually have one. Um, so. I, I, they fit in the carry all along with my bait, um, and some. I think what uh, when I got a slightly bigger one, I used to carry that separate because it had, it had it, the Preston ones were in those um, cases, like a, a little sleeve with a clip on, and I used to carry <clears throat> the blue and the green one separate, one with the XL, one with the, the standard, and I used to carry those separate uh, rather than putting them in a bag. I don't know if that was just because I, I, did, I didn't know about roller bags or. I don't know, maybe I didn't want anything else to carry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in that bag, it'd have my attachments for my box, uh, my bait tubs and all that kind of stuff in there. And it fit in fine. And it again, in the red, lovely graphics with that same material, which, as, as I was saying before, is a, is a con if you look at it in regards to scuffing, but a pro in regards to semi-shower proof. Um, so again good zips um, and just looked really good they've got the tags a little rubber tags on the uh, on the zip ends of the air logos and you know really stylish piece of kit um and what i'm not going to say is prices because i have no clue but they'll be around a similar price as to what normal things are most carry-alls are around 50 to 70 quid most roller bags are around 50 to 65 if unless you're going really bigger and the say the, the rod bags can be anywhere from 85 to over 110 thereabouts bait bags around 45 to 50 quid depending on what size so you might have to do a little bit of digging for that um and realistically um i, I didn't i just didn't get a roller bag at the time so the other thing was the bait bag and I went for the, there was two bait bags, I believe, and I went for the smaller one. Um, and I did find that I could have done with a little bit more space. It was a little bit smaller than I, 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 than the Matrix one. Um, it, it fit, you know, it fits nice stuff in and, you know, it got the same materials. It looked exactly the same. It got the nice padded, nice zips, all that. Um, it not got a front pocket, I don't remember, it having a front pocket, which were a bit of a negative. And it also were a bit of a negative, the fact that the capacity wasn't as big, but maybe I should have just got a, a slightly bigger one. Maybe that's my fault. Um, but still a nice bag, a well-made bag, and um, that, that sh showerproof uh, coating on it again. Um, and then finally in that, I had a net bag, and the net bag was, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't an EVA or anything like that, it was the same materials, um, and 
you know, that just put me keep nets in. I had day wear air keep nets at the time, and you know that that kept them in, um, and I could, it kept you know kept it from going all over the car, and they could pour the water out, um, and you know it were well made, the zips were good, um, and you know it, a good quality uh, bag. And again, you could get that in red and blue, red or blue, and I got mine in red um, to match everything else, of course. Um, so moving on from the day wear air luggage. I went over to Reeve now obviously this is when I, I bought uh, my Reeve box and I were into the Drennan gear and Reeve was the most expensive gear that I bought the the, the luggage was it, it wasn't cheap man it, it, it was at the higher end of the brackets um, for, for each item and um, so I'll start with a roller bag um, I, I, I got a, a decent roller bag it, it was a big boy um, I, I would have said it was definitely as as big as a superior that I'd had. Um, it, it obviously, if you've anybody seen the superior, um, this this the sorry the Reeve rollers, um, it could fit uh, one of those in. So you know, uh, two of those. So it, it's obviously quite a big uh, roller bag, as you'd imagine, with accessory bag. So it had a, a front zip as well. Um, the, the lovely Reeve printed colour um, stripes on there big big handle uh, big shoulder strap and and, and it was a, a quality bit of kit um the, the, again the only negatives were that um, it wasn't reinforced underneath um which i found a bit bizarre um it it um it had the same material as the matrix the original matrix so it did just get soaked if anything went on it um and the designs were um like a printed material onto it so it wasn't like stitched into it it was like embossed on it um and after time you got scuff marks and scar marks on, on that and it you know it, it did i don't want to say it ruined it because it were only the odd mark but it, it was easy to to make marks on it so that is something if you're looking at it but still a great bag loads of quality um and um, but you know decent bit of kit and moving on from that I, I did get the carry all as well and that was a 45 litre again it had a big front pocket to put your nets in and a, a fold over flap with a click had the either side pockets on on either side to to fit in your little bits your scales your your, your waistling if you carry that with you your strap for your box um, and then obviously got plenty of space inside to to put all my bait tubs now I ended up having more space because obviously I'd now got a roller accessory bag to put all my rollers and accessories into so I had to I start to get like bits of EVA luggage that came from Reeve and it was starting uh, those kind of things and I used to put those in there um, and you know that that was um, a really a big help in that respect uh, and again same material same design same um, same stripes and things like that uh, double jewel handle and a big shoulder strap um, quality were fine no problems with that whatsoever um, although it did have that printing uh, used to scuff again and it also had that waterproof uh, issue but again th that's just something that most luggage uh, does have um, and then along with that I, I had the small bait bag well it, it although it was just it was uh, i don't know if it was a small bait bag actually it might have just been a medium bait bag but it, it did have a lot more space it had a front pouch and side pockets it had a lot more space but i did break the carabiner carabiner on the side so when you h h have the shoulder strap on um that did break um and that was m probably my fault i had quite a bit of ground bait in it probably around a six kilo uh, mark and it probably just too much for it i mean it shut the bag for sure it won't bulging or anything like that but just the weight in there were too much for it but for me that it should be a, it should have been a little bit more reinforced because i've had the same weight in the monster it, sorry in the superior in the air in in the matrix and it's i've never had that issue so maybe that's a manufacturing fault with that piece um, and I had to just tie through the strap and tie it back on itself and um, to put that back on but it did annoy me a little bit that but other than that it was a great bag but same issues waterproof and design were easy to scuff um, and along with that I bought a Drennan hard case and that were a two-piece Drennan hard case um, and that was uh, the smaller one of the two 
uh, it wasn't um, it wasn't the 196 it was the 160 something 164 I'm going to say uh, you probably proved me wrong but it was a shorter one of the two that you could buy and that was only because I got a 10 and 11 foot rod they fit perfectly into there um, and that, I have nothing bad to say about them they're, they're really good hard cases the older shape, they've got the straps inside they've got the divider um, zips are strong, I've got one to this day with two of my barbell rods in uh, with, with a slightly bigger one uh, with my two barbell um, series 7 rods and reels in there and you know they're great, I throw it up and down river just text it, um, nothing to say about that, That is it's a great, I mean it's not waterproof um, but other than that it's an absolute beast of, a, of um, an hard case and I'll never ever say to to anybody that if you ever get an hard case it's adrenaline you know that's why you see so many in the second hand market because uh, so far after they've been bought because they just last for forever so that were a really good piece of kit that um so yeah overall like i said the the, the, the reef gear are a little bit more expensive than the other gear um that's just I think it's just quite it's quite a prestige name isn't it Reeve and, and it and it does demand a bit more a bit more money um so yeah that's that um so before I went this is actually I'm, I'm gonna stick this in um I can't remember where I had it I think I had it before after the matrix and before the Daiwa air or it might be before the air and before the Reeve I had a monster uh, it was my first roost and pole roller bo uh, bag. It was uh, Preston Monster um, hard case one, and that that was a, a good one. That that was a, the big version, um, not the XL, just a normal uh, big one. Um, and that that were a really good bag. That that so again that lovely lovely zips, big straps um, on the shoulder and and on the top, plenty of fit, fit plenty of space inside, nice zips and uh, i really got on well with that it was um the hard the, the hard um, shell one so it got that extra protection um obviously again it won't waterproof but you know it's one of them um but it could fit all, all my gear in there no problem and that's when i started putting my preston um rollers into there um and i think it was after the air you know before i was getting the air after getting rid of the air luggage and before i got the reeve i think i had a very brief stop and i think i had it for about so I think I got it when I was fishing with the diver stuff and I got it and I had it for probably eight months um, before I then moved to the Reeve. So that's why it fits in somewhere there. I just forgot about that. Um, but so after the Reeve, I went into Superior, which obviously most of you uh, will have seen me fish with new and old members um, on the group and on the subscribers. And you also just seen that I've just done a, a long lasting tackle review on that just before I, I went on to my new stuff. Um, brilliant stuff is a superior i really enjoyed having it. it it's so durable um and fantastic to look at understated not in your face got the smoked out graphics on there um and it got that semi shower proof um material as well so it didn't get absolutely soaked in there um which was great now we'll start i had the small bait bag now that's my biggest negative and that's my fault it's nothing to do with the luggage i got the wrong size it was too small for what i needed it was always packed out and i always carrying bits and bobs in my in my carry-all um to, to to substitute that because there was just so much um so, so small but inside was a wipeable material which was the first one i'd had like that and it was absolutely brilliant wipeable interior it was almost like a cool bag um it got two side pockets and a front one um but it, i just struggle for space that was my only thing but if you're going to buy a, sm a small bait bag then what do you expect it's my own fault um the zips were pressed in so they're super strong and got that nice um blue beading on it smoked out right in and it got a similar feel to the air but it didn't seem to uh scuff as easy it did scuff but not as easy as that air stuff did it were almost rubberized the one on the air so you know that, that were really decent and you know i, I enjoyed that after a while, the, the, the Velcro started to go a little bit, but not, not too much, but that's probably because I was putting so much stuff into such a small bag. Um, but, you know, other than that, it, 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 it's more my fault than, than the bag's fault. Um, the roller bag, so I love that. Got a big pocket at the front. I used to fit um, both my uh, big tripods, one either way around, and still um, my feeder arm in there as well. So a good size front pocket, and then the big pocket, everything else fit into there. 
all my uh, my roosts and my um, rollers and all that kind of stuff in. And again, I didn't have massive rollers and nowhere near the same size as the Matrix are, um, but there was still a good sort of 60 centimetre roller. Um, and you know, to fit them in with ease, uh, the, again with that the zips, the handle and then the big padded handle adjustable was great, uh, nice graphics and again that nice blue beading and it's just a really nice quality bag um, and it, all the shapes of those bags as well were very symmetrical and easy to stack into the car which was, was fantastic and of course I got the, the 45 litre um, carry all with that and what I liked about the carry all is it got the front part for your nets but also got the rear part which zipped round to fit anything else like i had the hoop for my attachment that fits on here um to put the big bait bowl in it and um, that used to fit in there when when midi sends me elastics or line or feeders or anything terminal tackle to test then i shove that all in the back there so when i do testing i know it's there in the back easy to get to in that big and, and it almost you could put a keep net in there really that I, i'm assuming that's what they were for um if you were just good, taking it out to canal and you could have a single or double keep net in there um and then obviously it, inside again um loads of space very symmetrical to, to stack your bait bags and, and tubs into there just a, a good quality bag um and along with that i had a superior double rod bag um, and that double rod bag is obviously was was the hard case um and you know that that was a great piece of kit had the um divider in the middle had inside the straps and then obviously the single bits at the bottom to stick the butts of the rod in um and a really nice rod bag um just a nice handle on the back and then a big um, strap to put over your shoulder not much, not much else you can ask <clears throat> ask from from uh, from uh, a rod bag and again the same material and design which looked fantastic and the last thing that's with the superior that wasn't superior luggage is my garbolino um net bag so again that's an eva net bag uh, i still have it to this day um i use it to keep my keep nets in it's got three keep nets in it could fit four in there no problems whatsoever um and it's an eva bag so once uh, once the dips i can just pour them out i keep it in there because i don't really fish that matches that many matches but my keep nets are safe and sound in that in that there's no point in i've got the uh, the ethos pro for my normal nets and if i was going to a session then i'd probably just take a net out and stick it into there to take with me um if, if i was doing a feature somewhere and i needed a net i would do that um otherwise I'd, I'd just leave them in there until we do members days because i just don't need them um but you know a really nice piece uh, of kit i didn't pay a lot of money for it um it were on offer at bobco that's why i snaffled it um nice handle um across the top and then a nice big shoulder strap um adjustable and, and easy to easy to carry um not much more you can say about that just does its purpose um nice and strong and that eva finish makes it super waterproof and washable um so nice and easy so that moves me <clears throat> to where we are currently and that's the ethos pro so the ethos pro is obviously the newer matrix luggage has been out two, two or three years now but it is the newest that's out there at the moment um now now that i've bought it i'll probably bring a new set out but you know i'm not bothered it matches my <laughs> matches my stuff so i'm not bothered um so in that what have we got so you'll have seen some of these things pop up um so i'm not going to spend too much time on it as i've just done a lot of the reviews so we have got a tackle and bait bag um and this is the, the new design like i've said for me to go and and instead of getting a carry all i've got this what does both so it's got my eva systems in it it's got my bait that i need in it it's got my towels it's got the double pocket at the front i'm not sure if that review's come out yet but it, oh yes it has it's got a, a nice underneath hard case bottom um and it's also got the handle the, the big handle and the the lift up handle um and the two big pockets at the front so everything that I need in there um, with that with that bottom as well, that hard bottom. And I must say the superiors did have the hard bottoms as well, which was fantastic uh, for when, you know, you know, damaging the bottom. Just to, forgot to mention that. Um, but yeah, and it's, I'm pointing there because it's the, they're just out at shed while I've moved my box out. <laughs> Sorry, I just realised there's only me that knows that. Um, so yeah, and, and but the negative is the material again. It's not waterproof, so, but I mean it's not it's a negative it's not really a negative but um yeah so finishing that lovely gray uh, yellow and blue stripes with a nice new matrix badging it just looks fantastic the nice ethos pro uh, diagonally across 
just n nothing more than I can uh, that I can want from it. Um, then I've got the, the the roller accessory bag. You've seen that one. Um, it, it fits. Um, oh, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It sort of opens up like that, and then it, you can unzip either side, and that fits all the stuff in. So if you if you haven't seen these videos, just to let you know, if you go onto the unboxing and reviews playlist, there's a superior luggage, and there is this uh, new Ethos Pro on there. Um, so you you will able to see that. So again, that fits absolutely everything. All my attachment for my box, all my pole rollers, all my camera um, tripod equipment, all that fits in there, no problemo, and that clips up, um, and it's got a, a durable bottom to stop it from scraping. It is an FDB, so it does weigh a ton, but it's gonna do with all that stuff that's in there. Um, but it doesn't doesn't strain the bag whatsoever. It's, it's made strong, the zips are strong, everything's reinforced on the strapping and everything like that, so it's not a problem. So with that, what did I do? I just got an EVA um, case. I've just got a one net EVA case with a, a dip bag in there. So it's a, a, dip, uh, a dip net, um, which is made out of rubber. So it dries really quickly and I can lift that out with my nets when I go to a venue, dip that, put it back in, put it back in the car. Nothing's wet, take it out, let it drain on the side and we're good to go for when I'm fishing commercials. Now I've got about f four to five nets in there. Um, some people think, why, why you got four to five nets? Well, I do a lot of testing, so I've got um, nets from MIDI in there, I've got net, nets from Leader in there, I've also got Guru nets um, for when I do F1 fishing, I've got a Matrix carp net for when I go carp fishing, I use the the, um, the MIDI ones when I use uh, for silverfish because it's a, a shallower net, um, and then I've got uh, a Drennan Acrylite net in there, uh, as, as a, a quick a, I can't remember what it's called now a speed net um, speed X that's what it's called a, a Genon speed X net um, and I use that again for carping because it's quite a deep net so <clears throat> it's always good to have a selection of landing nets depending on what venue you're fishing and um, they've all got different materials in so uh, if I'm using certain uh, bait stops and things like that uh, and I don't want them to get tangled I, I might use different nets um, so always good to have a selection of nets if you can pick them up from next to nothing second hand if they're in half decent condition brand new they're only sort of 15 to 20 quid um, so I just pick them up as and when I sometimes give them I give a lot of them away sometimes if I see people on the bank young kids and things like that that have not got a good net or it's a huge net or something like that then I'll give them a net um, a guy came and bought some superior luggage off for me and he just started and I got chatting with him uh, that bought one of my superior pieces um, and because he was getting back into fishing I gave him my Preston net that I had um, just to get him started you know he was in great condition and I just thought that, that that's something else he doesn't have to buy so you know that's what it's about for me um, just it makes somebody's day and it also helps somebody catch so you know that's that's what it's about so along with those matrix pieces of luggage i've also got the um Daiwa end zone uh rod bag now and that's the the, the ready to hard case a 196 centimeter um case and that's the best ready rod bag that i've ever had and I, the reason i say this is uh, end zone um their gear is geared up to people that are feeder fishing and going to these big natural venues or the the walking long distances and sometimes they might not do anything else than feeder fishing so they've, they've prepared the bag for it so it fits two rods in easy if you had 10 footers and nine footers you'll probably fit three to four in there if you were clever and now you're jockeyed it around um my, re my review for that is on there uh, on the playlists um on, under unboxing reviews but the the bases of where the butts of the rods goes in um they velcro down but you can they're on sliders so you can adjust it for where it goes in the rod bag to make sure the reels aren't set, sat together um, and with a drawstring and then they've obviously got the central divider in there um, to divide the, the rods up they've got two sets of rod bands in there to velcro them up and then obviously the hard case itself um, but along with that it's got a tip tube part on the side which is great to keep all your tip tubes in and then it's got two other compartments one um, if you've got like um, a, a, a rain mac or anything like that you want to stick in it you, you can do or you're measuring sticks and then there's got a longer one which you can put your landing handle links which is mine is in at the moment while i'm in between poles uh, got a big rubberized handle at the back a lovely neoprene rubberized handle it's lovely and then a big um comfy padded uh, one which you put it over your shoulder and you can walk long distances with it um reinforced on the bottom and it's got that 
sort of wipeable uh, finish to the material as well so you know good for shower proof and, and throwing up and down the banks um, not to mention it looks lovely uh, with the designs so yeah that's that's it in a nutshell really um, I, I've, I've had lots of bits and bobs of um, things over the years uh, I've had some Browning Champions Choice when I first started years and years ago uh, the Browning's Champions Choice uh, purple luggage um, and then I, I also had which I'm sure a lot of people will not nod their heads to this when I say this the old school Daiwa luggage where they were black with a team Daiwa across it which you could get an old set of it for about 50 quid from Argos um, I had that I had the rod bag um, uh, uh, the carry all and a net bag uh, from that years and years ago uh, when I could fit everything into that one carry-all cod so that that is going back some time and uh, yeah I'm sure a lot of people have had that same luggage and I had the odd bits of Shakespeare stuff um, um, and I've had the, the, the key nets I'm sure everybody's had that at one point that little key nets net bag the black one with the green seam on it with the key nets wrote across it my granddad gave me one of those one of my first little net bags um, so yeah you know luggage has changed a lot um, and there's a lot out there and it's, always, it's still always good to, to go and have a look and see uh, what things are like um, and, and that's where I try to do my best th uh, to try and change my gear so you can see things and I know that doesn't sound like an economically good thing to do but you know fishing is what I love and, and, and giving that information back and seeing these comments from, from you uh, that it's helping you in these times and it helps you make informed decisions that's that's good enough for me because i get some gear that i can use and yeah i might lose a few quid but you know i i get the current stuff and you know it's nice for me as well so it's a win-win in my situation and then when we can get back in shops uh, you know i've got a good relationship with bobco and we can go in there and video um specific bits like we did with the pole series um, and get that information back to you and um, there's other things on there as well like friends do do um, when they get gear that's different I, I'll do reviews of that so if like the superior gear which is fantastic the brand and superior stuff and um, Kel lent me that uh, to do um, a video on that so go and have a look at that again on unboxing reviews and you know stuff like that it, it just helps people make informed decisions and that's what it's all about isn't it um, everybody's got a favorite brand and everybody's got something that looks better or, or they've got different demands of what they want from the gear um, and it's just about somebody to give you that information um, you know we've also got like the, some EVA stuff on there that that midi carry uh, carry all that I use for the river which is obviously completely waterproof is a fantastic bit of kit guru do a similar um, scenario over to sort of map um, there's, there's loads of stuff out there um, people message me and, and that's why I encourage if someone wants to know some information and I can give it to them just just give me a message put a comment in the YouTube down below and uh, you know we'll, we'll do our best to, to facilitate whatever it is you want to know um, any ideas for more for pros and cons um, keep them coming now we've got they've got the reels uh, one which I've got to, to shoot um, and and then really it's, it's just about anything else that you feel that would be an interesting uh, watch uh, for you guys to know so thank you very much for watching it's been a pleasure as always I hope everybody is safe um, in the current times and uh, you know these videos we're gonna keep rolling as long and as long as I can put videos up daily until I go back to work or I run out of things to do in regards to content but keep those ideas coming um, that we can do uh, we'll try and get out fishing in between the weather and and hopefully have a few more fish on the bank um, but keep safe thank you very much for watching join us on the facebook group angling for you join us on the instagram angling underscore for you like share and subscribe and share with your friends if you can and until the next one guys thanks a lot for watching tight lines <laughs>